almost 20 years ago, I used to work in a supermarket chain called Lidl. Lidl actually used to have stores in Norway, but they exited this market 10 or 12 years ago. So we actually don't have Lidl stores anymore and we haven't had them for a while. But the point of the story is that the regional managers in Lidl used to drive Audi A4 Avants or Audi A4 station wagons. And these were the entry level version, the 1.6 liter petrol with 102 horsepower. So these were really slow cars with not enough power for them to really be enjoyable to drive. And also these cars were like the poverty spec, the entry, entry level versions with no optional extras. We're talking cloth seats, plastic steering wheel and wind up windows in the rear. And that brings us to today's topic, today's video, which is more of a discussion, more of a talk, more of a Sunday drive on the first day of spring here in Oslo with 14 degrees Celsius outside, which is pretty warm compared to what it has been. We had snow and minus three degrees just a few days ago. So today's video, not a traditional review, it's just more of a talk. And today's topic is, is a poverty spec luxury car or premium car worth it? Or should you maybe go for a cheaper product with more optional extras? And that brings us to this press car I'm driving right now, which I picked up a week ago. And this is an Audi Q4 45 e Tron Quattro with only one optional package, which gives this car navigation, electric tailgate, also adaptive cruise control, and a few other niceties here and there. But other than that, this car has one level up upgraded sound system, so it's pretty basic. Also cloth seats, these are manual seats, and yeah, pretty much no optional extras. And in my opinion, you don't really get a sense of premiumness, you don't get a sense of luxury in a car like this. Is it nicer than a base spec ID4? Yes, it is, but, but not by much. I mean, like everything is just black and dark, so there's a few things like the center console, actually instead of being glossy black plastic, is actually now matte plastic, I prefer that. But these cloth seats, I mean, they look fine, but I just don't like the way my clothes rub against them after sitting here for a while. Because they are cloth and it's pretty coarse, you know, the material, it just, there's a little bit of friction. So when I'm moving around, it just creates heat, which is probably fine in winter, but now that it's, getting, it's starting to get a little bit warmer outside, yeah. I don't think that's particularly nice. And also just the feel of this fabric when touching it. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't feel nice. So I would probably never go for cloth seats like this. Maybe I would upgrade to sports seats with half, you know, a different type of fabric and half like leatherette, or I would just go for, you know, the, the leather interior, which is not much more expensive. And if I had a budget, you know, really strict budget, I would probably, not option other things. I think the interior is a pretty important, you know, place for to spend money because that's where you're going to spend your time. But the exterior of this car actually looks pretty premium. It looks like any other Q4 e-tron on the market. It's just in here where it does feel bare bones. But there's nothing bare bones about the battery pack size, the range, and also the drivetrain of this car because this has the new upgraded drivetrain which is 286 horsepower. And I'm gonna throw all the specs on the screen now, the range and the charging speed. So it's all upgraded and it's quite a quick car. It's not as quick as something like the Volvo EX30 Twin Performance I had last week. And that begs the question, for basically the same money as a fully spec Volvo EX30 Twin Performance, you can get this car spec like this. This is about 540,000 kroners, which is a lot of money, but also for this type of vehicle, I don't think that's too bad. And you can probably go to a dealer, you can probably haggle a little bit and you can probably have a few options thrown in or you can get you know, a little bit off that, off that price, especially if they have cars in stock. This is 24 model, this is the new model, but if, they're car if they have cars in stock, I'm pretty sure you can you know, uh, haggle a little bit off that top of the price. So I don't think this is actually a bad vehicle. If it was between a fully spec Volvo EX30 Twin Performance and this, the way this is specced, I would probably go for this car. Even though I think that EX30 is a really nice car to drive, it's more comfortable than this, it's more sporty, it's a lot quicker. I also think it's a little bit more quiet. 
and that car is really impressive and also the seats in that car is better there are a lot of things i like about that volvo more than this of course the performance as i said the sound system is going to be better and it just feels like a more premium product overall in my opinion but what you're getting here is better functionality like the ergonomics here with the steering wheel uh, controls with the stocks with the switch gear this is just a an easier car to use and you also can turn off lane keep assist with a button here on the stock you can turn off speed limit warning in the driver assistance systems with a shortcut in the menu here so it's all really easy to use and also this is undeniably a much bigger and much more roomy car than that Volvo EX30 so if you're you know if you're going to carry people if you're going to carry cargo undoubtedly this is a much smarter and better choice the rear seats in this is almost as big as that Q6 e-tron if not a little bit bigger which is really weird because I hopped in the back of this car with my friend Tony who I have a podcast with on the Norwegian channel after we played you know we recorded the last episode we hopped into the back of this and I'm like I think actually this is more roomy than that Q6 e-tron which doesn't make sense because that car has a much longer wheelbase it's much bigger but the greenhouse in this car is pushed a lot more forward so this has a very short hood and the the a pillar actually starts above the front wheels where the hood or the a pillar on the q6 e-tron starts way behind the front wheels so i think that explains the interior so overall a poverty spec luxury car or a poverty spec premium vehicle is it worth it well it of course depends on your personal preference I think for myself, as I said, I would probably go for this, but I would at least spec it with a nicer interior because that, you know, spending a little bit more money on a nicer interior just elevates the feeling of luxury so much more because this drives really nicely. It's quiet, it's comfortable, it has decent range, it has really nice charging speed, it also has good range and performance. It's only lacking in the materials of the seats because the steering wheel is covered in leather so it's not like back in the day where the steering wheel was plastic this is actually leather and you know the touch points are mostly really nice it has audi switch gear which also mostly is nice though the window switches over here do feel a little bit cheap that's where that ex30 feels a lot more premium and also like high up in the cabin where you have hard touch plastics you're not going to find that in that Volvo so this is you know a compromised product but also a product I, I really do prefer but I also think for around the same money you can also get a Skoda Enyaq which is also a car if you're looking at something like this which is something absolutely to consider there are a lot of options there are a lot of things at this price point but also I just got to check out the new Volkswagen ID7 station wagon which also is quite aggressively priced for what you're gonna get in Norway, fully specced, like with all the bells and whistles, it's a little bit less than 600,000 kroners, which is not much more money than this. And which, what is funny is that that car has a much more premium interior than this. I mean, that car, like everything about the waistline, just is soft touch plastics, it feels nice, it looks nice. So, so yeah, so maybe I answered my own question there because of that ID7 Tour, the exclusive trim level which is a little bit more money than this, maybe I would rather forgo the Audi badge and go for that car instead. So guys, that was a Sunday Drive video. That was just a little bit of a talk with you guys. I hope you enjoyed today's video and let me know down below, what would you do? Would you go for a poverty spec Audi Q4 e-tron like this or would you go for something else with a little bit more equipment? So I hope you enjoyed today's video. If you did, please drop me a thumbs up down below and for more car content, as always, please subscribe. See you guys later and goodbye.